Good morning, everyone. This is Chuck King from Ford City, Pennsylvania, bringing you the Exodus study in Exodus chapter 8 on Monday, March 8, 2021. So this is Monday, March 8, and we are studying chapter 8 in Exodus. Let's go. If we have more time, we'll move on to into chapter 9. Then verse 1, Then the Lord said to Moses, Go to Pharaoh and say to him, Thus says the Lord, Let my people go that they may serve me. So this was the commandment of God through Moses and Aaron to Pharaoh uh, repeatedly. Verse 2, But if you refuse to let them go, behold, I will smite your whole territory with frogs. The Nile will swarm with frogs, which will come up and go into your house and into your bedroom and on your bed, and into the houses of your servants, and on your people, and into the, your ovens, and into your kneading bowls, so that the frogs will come up on you and your people and all your servants. Terrible prophetic word for the Egyptians. If they don't let the people leave Egypt, God will send a a horrific plague of frogs everywhere. You, you won't be able to get rid of the frogs. Verse 5, Then the Lord said to Moses, Say to Aaron, Stretch out your hand with your staff. See how important that staff was. God used that staff over and over again to do supernatural work uh, through Moses and Aaron. Stretch out your staff over the rivers, over the streams, and over the pools and make frogs come up on the land of Egypt. So Aaron stretched out his hand over the waters of Egypt, and the frogs came up and covered the land of Egypt. Now, interesting, verse 7, the magicians did the same with their secret arts, making frogs come up on the land of Egypt. So somehow, separately and distinctly, these, these Antichrist Egyptian magicians by their by their demonic power brought frogs out of the water as well so uh, again the power of the devil to counterfeit the power of god verse 8 then pharaoh called for moses and aaron and said entreat the lord that he remove the frogs from me and from my people and i will let the people go that they may sacrifice to the lord so this is the first crack in his resolve, the frogs must have really gotten to him. And he recognized God had sent them. And he's uh, now, before he didn't even recognize the Lord, now he's, he's asking Moses and Aaron to pray to the Lord that he would remove the frogs and he would let them go. Verse 9, Moses said to Pharaoh, the honor is yours to tell me, when shall I entreat for you and your servants and your people that the frogs be destroyed from you and your houses that they may be left only in the Nile? So he gave Pharaoh the opportunity to choose the time when this would happen. Verse 10, then he said, tomorrow. So he said, may it be according to your word that you may know that there is no one like the Lord our God. So exalting the Lord in this, giving him the credit and control of this. And uh, so uh, Pharaoh said tomorrow, verse 11, the frogs will depart from you and your houses and your servants and your people, and they will be left only in the Nile. Then Moses and Aaron went out from Pharaoh, and Moses cried to the Lord concerning the frogs, which he had inflicted upon Pharaoh. So even though Moses had promised Pharaoh that it would happen according to his timing, Moses still went out and sought the Lord to confirm because the Lord's the only one that could take care of these frogs since he's the one to introduce them. Verse 13, the Lord did according to the word of Moses and the frogs died out of the houses, the courts, 
and the fields. So they piled them in heaps, and the land became foul. You can imagine that. Stinky frog rot all over the place. But when Pharaoh saw that there was relief, he hardened his heart and did not listen to them as the Lord had said. So God honored uh, Moses, promised to Pharaoh to remove them on his timing that next day, and the frogs were destroyed, piled in big piles to be removed eventually, you would assume. But once Pharaoh saw this relief, he allowed his heart to get hard again. He willfully chose to refuse to yield. Verse 16. Then the Lord said to Moses, Say to Aaron, Stretch out your staff and strike the dust of the earth, that it may become gnats or lice throughout all the land of Egypt. So we've we've already done the gone through the first plague. Well, the first plague was actually water to blood. And now we have uh, the frogs that have come and gone. And now we're into the plague of the, of the gnats or the lice. Verse 17, they did so. And Aaron stretched out his hand with his staff and struck the dust of the earth. And there were gnats or lice on man and beast. All the dust of the earth became gnats or lice through the all the land of Egypt. Verse 18, the magicians tried with their secret arts to bring forth gnats or lice, but they could not. So there were gnats on man and beast. So now here we have it. They were able to, to trick Pharaoh into seeing the water turn to blood as a counterfeit to God's move in the fresh water supplies. So they, were, they were able to trick Pharaoh by bringing frogs out of the Nile uh, and the uh, and that plague passed. But now, this third plague, uh, it turns out that they don't, they didn't have the power. They didn't have the ability, the demonic power, the Antichrist power, to duplicate or counterfeit this plague of the lice or the gnats. Verse 19, Then the magicians said to Pharaoh, this is the finger of God. But Pharaoh's heart was hardened, and he did not listen to them as the Lord had said. So the magicians, in their, in their demonic power, realized that they were limited, and they could not do, do this, this sign, this plague of lice or gnats. And they, they acknowledged that it was God that had done this. But Pharaoh refused to listen and he continued to have that hard heart. Verse 20. Now remember the Lord said this would happen. That Pharaoh wouldn't, wouldn't uh, respond unless he was forced. And that process is going on now. Verse 20. Now the Lord said to Moses, rise early in the morning and present yourself before Pharaoh as he comes out to the water and say to him, thus says the Lord, let my people go that they may serve me. So it's the same proclamation or command from the Lord each time. For if you do not let my people go, behold, I will send swarms of insects on you and on your servants and on your people and into your houses. And the houses of the Egyptians will be full of swarms of insects and also the ground on which they dwell. But on that day, I will set apart the land of Goshen where the people are living, so that no swarms of insects will be there, in order that you may know that I, the Lord, am in the midst of the land. I will put a division between my people and your people. Tomorrow this sign will occur. And so the Lord did so, verse 24. And there became great swarms of insects into the house of Pharaoh and the houses of his servants, and the land was laid waste because of the swarms of insects in all the land of Egypt. So God said, let my people go, or I'm going to send this plague of insects 
and but the people of God, the Israelites, will be protected from it. They won't experience the plague of the insects, only the, the Egyptians. And God made it happen. Verse 25, Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron and said, go, sacrifice to your God within the land. So you see, he's starting to lean toward letting them go, with a, even though his heart remains hard. But Moses said, it is not right to do so, for we will sacrifice the Lord our God, what is an abomination to the Egyptians. If we sacrifice what is an abomination to the Egyptians before their eyes, will they not stone us? We must go a three days journey into the wilderness and sacrifice to the Lord our God as he commanded us. So Pharaoh's uh, trying to compromise here and say, go ahead and sacrifice, but stay in, in the land of Egypt. Then Moses says, no, we can't do that. We need to go, as God commanded, three days into the wilderness to the mountain of God. Verse 28, Pharaoh said, I will let you go that you may sacrifice the Lord your God in the wilderness, only you shall not go very far away. Make supplication for me. And then Moses said, Behold, I'm going out from you, and I shall make supplication to the Lord that the swarms of insects may depart from Pharaoh, from his servants, and from his people tomorrow. Only do not let Pharaoh deal deceitfully again in not letting the people go to sacrifice to the Lord. So Moses went out from the Pharaoh and made a supplication to the Lord, and the Lord did as Moses asked, and removed the swarm of insects from Pharaoh and from his servants and from his people. Not one remained. So God took care of it based on Moses' supplication. Verse 32, but Pharaoh hardened his heart this time also, and he did not let the people go. Verse Chapter 9, verse 1, then the Lord said to Moses, go to Pharaoh and speak to him, Thus says the Lord, the God of the Hebrews, let my people go that they may serve me. Same command. For if you refuse to let them go and continue to hold them, behold, the hand of the Lord will come with a very severe pestilence on your livestock, which are in the field, on the horses, on the donkeys, on the camels, on the herds, and on the flocks. But the Lord will make a distinction between the livestock of Israel and the livestock of Egypt, so that nothing will die off of all that belongs to the sons of Israel. The Lord said a definite time, saying, Tomorrow the Lord will do this thing in the land. So the Lord did this thing in the, the next day, and all the livestock of Egypt died, but the livestock of the sons of Israel, not one died. Pharaoh sent, and behold, there was not even one of the livestock of Israel dead, but the heart of Pharaoh was hardened. And he did not let the people go. So we've had the water turn to blood, frogs all over the land, the plague of lice or gnats, and all of those were taken away. Pharaoh is still hardening his heart, and now God promised, promised and fulfilled killing all the livestock of the Egyptians, and Pharaoh still didn't relent. Verse 8. Then the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, Take for yourselves handfuls of soot from a kiln and let Moses throw it toward the sky in the sight of Pharaoh. And it will become fine dust all over the land of Egypt and will become boils breaking out with sores on man and beast through all the land of Egypt. So they took soot from a kiln and stood before Pharaoh and Moses threw it toward the sky and it became boils breaking out with sores on man and beast. So now we have a plague of boils. Verse 11, the magicians could not stand before Moses because of the boils, for the boils were on the magicians as well as on all the Egyptians. And the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart, and he did not listen to them, just as the Lord has spoken to Moses. So now we have this plague of boils and even breaking out on the magicians as Moses declares it would happen. But Pharaoh hardens his heart. Verse 13, then the Lord said to Moses, rise up early 
in the morning and stand before Pharaoh and say to him, Thus says the Lord, the God of Hebrews, Let my people go, that they may serve me. For this time I will send all my plagues on you and your servants and your people, so that you may know that there is no one else like me in all the earth. For if by now I had put forth my hand and struck you and your people with pestilence, you would then have been cut off from the earth. But indeed, for this reason, God tells Pharaoh, I have allowed you to remain in order to show you my power and in order to proclaim my name through all the earth. Still you exalt yourself against my people by not letting them go. So God's declaring that he's being glorified and exalted in the earth through the outpouring of these plagues on this a stubborn Pharaoh and his nation because they won't let God's people go. Verse 14, Behold, about this time tomorrow, I will send a very heavy hail, such as not been seen in Egypt from the day it was founded until now. Now therefore, send, bring your livestock and whatever you have in the field to safety. Every man and beast that is found in the field and is not brought home when the hail comes down on them will die. The, uh, the one among the servants of Pharaoh who feared the word of the Lord made his servants and his livestock flee into the houses. But he who paid no regards of the word of the Lord left the servants and his livestock in the field. Verse 22, Now the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand toward the sky that hail may fall on all the land of Egypt, on man and on beast and on every plant of the field, Throughout the land of Egypt, Moses stretched out his staff toward the sky, and the Lord sent thunder and hail and fire, ran down to the earth, and the Lord rained hail on the land of Egypt. So there was hail and fire, or lightning probably, flashing continually in the, the midst of the hail, very severe, such as not been in all the land of Egypt, since it became a nation. So it's a supernatural judgment of God, of hail and lightning. The hail struck all that was in the field through all the land of Egypt, both man and beast. The hail also struck every plant of the field and shattered every tree of the field. Only in the land of Goshen, where the sons of Israel were, were there was no hail. So again, God's supernatural protection in the midst of a horrible judgment. He protected the Israelites. Verse 27, Then Pharaoh sent for Moses and Aaron and said to them, I have sinned this time. <laughs> wow, what an over understatement that was. I have sinned this time. The Lord is the righteous one, and I and my people are the wicked ones. So he's saying the right things. Make supplication to the Lord, for there has been enough of God's thunder and hail, and I will let you and uh, let you go and you shall stay no longer. Moses said to him, As soon as I go out of the city, I will spread out my hands to the Lord, and the thunder will cease, and there will be hail no longer, that you may know that the earth is the Lord's. But as for you and your servants, I know that you do not yet fear the Lord God. Now the flax and the barley were ruined, for the barley was in ear, and the flax was in bud, but the wheat and the spelt were not ruined, for they ripened late. So part of the crop was destroyed, but part was mercifully spared. So Moses went out of the city from Pharaoh and spread out his hands to the Lord. And the thunder and the hail ceased. The rain no longer poured on the earth. But when Pharaoh saw that the rain and the hail and the thunder had ceased, he sinned again and hardened his heart, he and his servants. Pharaoh's heart was hardened, and he did not let the sons of Israel go, just as the Lord had spoken through Moses. So there we have chapters 8 and 9 of these various plagues that came after the water being turned to blood. We had frogs and, and lice or gnats, and uh, then we had uh, these uh, insects uh, coming, uh, coming out, uh, and then the, the cattle died. Uh, 
and uh, of the Egyptians, and God was protecting all the property of the of the Israelis in in uh, Goshen. And then we had the boils, and then the plague of hail, the great destruction. And at the end of all of that, Pharaoh hardened his heart. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that you fulfilled every word that you spoke concerning the judgment of Egypt so that they would let the Israelites go. You prophesied it through Moses and Aaron, and every one of your words came to pass in your time and in your way. Father, we can't help but think about the final judgments on this earth and on the wicked people who refuse to believe the gospel. We know that every word that you have promised concerning judgment and plagues and devastation will come to pass. Father, help us to work while it's yet day, before the night comes when no man can work, that we might continue pleasing you, carrying out your commands, reaching the nations with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Help us, Lord. We are weak and immature as a church in these last days. Help us, Lord. Send revival. Transform your people into the bride that we ought to be, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so there's a couple of chapters. Chapters 8 and 9. We'll move on tomorrow. Please share the teachings with your friends from both Facebook and on from YouTube. And we'll look forward to continuing our study. The Word of God is powerful and it continues to lift us up and encourage us. God bless you all.